Hey guys, we're always trying to maximize our grow operations, get the best out of our uh, plants, get the best yield, get the best quality. And part of that is investigating light spectrum and what effects different parts of the light spectrum can have. One of the big ones, which is rarely talked about and often confused and misunderstood is far red. And we're gonna look into far red in depth in this video. We're gonna see what benefits there may be, uh, where to get it and how much we might use and when, and uh, all the latest science and research on the topic too. So let's go. So far red is part of the electromagnetic spectrum radiated by the sun, also present in some man-made grow light sources. And it's not considered part of the PAR range, nor the visible light spectrum. So it's a very dull red, not really visible to the eyes, and um, not um, measured as part of PAR. So the normal measurement of um, the um, useful light to grow plants. And the reason for this is generally it wasn't considered to be photosynthetic. Well, yes it does, and it's been known right back to one of the original references we have for spectrum efficiency or effectiveness, the McCree curve. And although it's far less than the effectiveness or red um, or green or blue, it is known to cause photosynthesis. More recent research in particular by Bruce Bugby, uh, Utah State University has shown that there probably is a greater potential for photosynthesis from far red than previously thought, and the curve may look like this. And, uh, but still, it will be less efficient than the other um, spectrum. So if far red is less efficient than the other spectrum that are readily and easily available from our grow lights, why would we want to add it in there? Well, to understand that, we need to understand the characteristics of far red light. And one of them is that it will penetrate deeper and through the leaf. When you look at the graph here, uh, thanks again to Bruce Bugby from Utah State University for, for loaning me these. Um, but if you look at the graph, the studies show that far red um, penetrates through the leaf. And we can show by experiment here. We come over here under our um, CMH light here. We've got a lovely broad spectrum of light includes about 11% far red. And if we take a measurement above the leaf here and below the leaf, you can see that below the leaf, about 50% of the far red light gets through, which is a high level of penetration. Much less of the blue and red gets through. A little bit of the green gets through about 10%. So underneath this plant canopy, we get a much higher amount of far red coming through than above and this causes a response from the plants. In nature, if the plants are in shade underneath the canopy, as I said, they're going to get a higher percentage of far red than um, of the rest of the light spectrum, the power spectrum. And the plant response is to grow taller. Um, it uh, cell expansion incurs or each of the individual cells within the plant get bigger and because of this each of the components of the plant get bigger and we get increased internodal distances, increased leaf size uh, and increased numbers of, of leaves and branches. This sounds great, sounds like you're getting more plant and it can be very good for certain varieties of plant. Um, in particular if we look at, at lettuce and again, some studies from Utah State University, we can see that when they um, substituted part of the regular power spectrum in a white light source with far red, they got a much increased size of lettuce plant. And whether this is lettuce or spinach, this is very desirable and can give you a higher um, yield, a higher mass. However, for indoor growing and for herbaceous and flowering plants, um, generally we want compact plants and the leaf size is not as critical for us um, although it can contribute to higher levels of, of photosynthesis to have a greater leaf area. It's far outweighed by the downside of having stretched and gangly plants. 
And you can see in these studies where far red has been added that, uh, you know, whether it's tomato or, or cucumber or soybean, they get very stretched and gangly with the addition of, of a relatively small amount of far red. And for indoor growers, this is a big negative because our plants are not going to be dense and compact, which is what we want to get a high yield from a, a relatively small space. Another area that far red light is known to be beneficial is for the promotion of flowering. And this is true of what are known as long day plants. So this is plants which in nature uh, are uh, uh, flower when the light cycle is longer. So up around 16 or 18 hours per day. Not cannabis plants, which are short day plants. And I had an, an interview recently with Professor Eric Runkel of Michigan State University and we went through in detail the benefits of adding supplemental far red to, as I said, to um, long day um, flowering plants. An example here, a slide, um, an extract from that interview, and uh, uh, this shows that the addition of far red can reduce the days of flower with geraniums uh, very significantly and can be very beneficial to commercial growers. However, there is not the same evidence available for short day plants such as cannabis. So the benefit of far red in terms of flowering for cannabis is not proven and not known. It may help a little bit in promoting more flowering, but uh, there's no evidence at the moment to uh, suggest this. Another aspect to consider with the overall spectrum and the addition of far red is what's called the Emerson um, enhancement effect. And this is where um, far red photons can work synergistically with um, the regular power range or, or white light and can substitute into the uh, photosynthesis equation where other power photons can't and therefore may increase uh, photosynthetic efficiency overall. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into this in great detail. Uh, there's a link there to the Bruce Bugby video uh, covering this, but um, yeah, suffice to say that far red photons will um, contribute to growth. How much these far red photons can improve the overall photosynthetic efficiency, it's likely to be marginal. I don't have figures, I don't, there's no studies uh, de defining it, uh, but as I said, it's likely to be marginal. Now, if you want to add far red to your grow light spectrum, you know, you may be want to get this um, little improvement from the Emerson effect. You want to get slightly large leaf size, etc. But you don't want to get too much stretching um, and lose control of your plants. You need a way to calculate the, uh, or measure how much far uh, red is in the spectrum and what likely effect that level of far red is going to have. In the past, uh, there was a measurement called phytochrome photoequilibrium, and this was experimented with and demonstrated that with sunlight as the background spectrum, that if you calculated the proportion of far red over the total of uh, photons, far red and red together, you got a number, and this could predict the um, degree of stretching for different plant varieties. However, it's a relatively complex one, and with the advent of um, uh, people using uh, indoor lighting, so LEDs, HPS, etc., this uh, measurement was proven not to be very accurate. So a new measurement has been developed, again by Bruce Bugby and his team in, in Utah, and they use a measurement called a percent far red. The percent far red measurement is the um, calculation of the photon, the far red photons divided by the total number of power photons plus the far red photons. So it's a proportion or percentage figure. And this has been shown under experiment to accurately predict the amount of stretching that a plant will, uh, will undergo under the different levels of far red. And this has been proven to be 
accurate irrespective of the underlying spectrum. So the blue line there representing a white LED, the green a HPS and the red a primarily uh, red light source. And even with those different uh, underlying spectrum, if you add far red to them, um, by percentage terms, you can very accurately predict the degree of stretching that will occur. And if we look at some sources, I've tested lots of different grow lights and, and, and different sources. I thought I'd just share with you what sort of levels of far red are in them regularly. You can see there goes from regular sort of LED um, cool white spectrum at about 2% up through the regular HID stuff at about uh, anywhere between three and five, six percent for high pressure sodium metal halide. And you can get some ceramic metal halide bulbs then that are up uh, in excess of 10% far red. Sunshine is a bit of an anomaly. It's got 20% far red, which you would think would predict a very high level of stretching. But just to throw a spanner in the works, um, blue spectrum, on the other end will counteract this cell expansion so blue causes uh, uh, cells to contract a smaller cell size and so one outweighs the other and so in, in, in uh, sunshine even at 20 percent far red the level of stretching will be relatively low. Apogee have come out with a brilliant sensor it's the power far sensor it's brand new out just on the market and they've sent me a prototype version. You get the sensor and a little uh, Bluetooth connector for it to connect up to your smartphone. And you can run the app and measure very quickly and accurately the percent far red in any light source. And you can also look at those uh, above and below canopy readings. Um, and yeah, really, really great, great technology. Um, and again, thanks to Apogee for sending it to me. And this is what it boils down to really. Should we have far red in our grow light spectrum for indoor growing? And if so, how much? I'll just look at the positives and the negatives. On the plus side, far red is photosynthetic. That has been uh, proven and demonstrated and can increase growth. However, on the negative side, the um, lower efficiency of uh, far red than blue, green and red means that you know, if you're going to invest money in additional LEDs or whatever, um, it should probably be in the regular power range rather than far red. Unless, however, you want to get um, cell expansion. Larger leaves, great for um, leafy veg, for growing uh, lettuce and spinach. However, that is not so desirable for indoor plants. Um, for herbaceous plants, we're really focused on the quantity of flowers and you know, excessive far red is going to cause too much stretching and make our plants ungainly and reduce the density of our grow and therefore reduce the amount that we can yield out of a given area. For flowering, again, if you have long day plants, you know, lots of greenhouse uh, operators um, commercial guys will use far red to control the flowering of ornamentals and cut flowers, the long day variety. However, for short day plants, it's not useful for controlling the flowering. It may enhance the flowering um, if used um, with particular timing, but I don't have any research or evidence to support that. Uh, so really, it comes down to um, why add it? Um, you know, I, I think that a small amount is probably preferable to round off the spectrum, but um, in my view, anything over four or five percent is going to lead to more stretching than is desirable and mean that it is counterproductive. That's my opinion. I'm sure that uh, there will be some other views out there, and I look forward to hearing them from you. Uh, please leave in the comments below and let me know um, if I've left anything out or um, if you don't believe what I've said is accurate. I'd be happy to have the debate and discussion with you. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Lots of info there, lots to digest. Uh, I hope it went, it went down okay and uh, you got it all. And uh, yeah, look forward to the next one. Take care, bye.